When we encounter a voice that moves us on an emotional level, by turns wringing tears from our eyes and plucking laughs from our bellies, there is an ineffable quality to its power. All we know is that we like listening to it and want to hear more. But when we encounter voices we find loathsome, we usually can pinpoint why without difficulty. Too nasal, too whiny, too steeped in anger or sodden with melancholy. The bard's voice was the ineffable sort. He planted himself behind the battlement facing the peninsula, where the vast sea of refugees swirled around their tents, and raised his hands from his sides as if to embrace all the people who had washed up there because of the war. Then he turned slowly as he spoke, including the city in his address as well. Good people of Pelamin, I am Fintan, bard of the poet goddess Caelan. At once, eyes swiveled to lock upon his form, or heads tilted in the far corners of the city to hear his disembodied voice better. Conversation subsided, and other magics seemed to begin their work. His beaming face elicited a kindred response and lifted moods. The cup of watery beer from a nameless keg that I had in my hand suddenly tasted like the crisp, legendary brews of Thorn. Pleasant aromas of fresh food were accentuated and wafted about on the wind, and the less pleasant whiffs of unwashed bodies and rotting garbage faded away. It is my life's work to tell stories, the bard continued, his smile gone now and replaced with an earnest tone. And no one else can tell you what I have seen. This great war of our time has indeed been terrible and I am still struck with its horrors, waking up in the night sweating and, well, I am sure I don't have to tell you. No, he didn't. Most of the people on Survivor Field were still wearing the same clothes they'd been wearing when they'd had to flee their homes. They were all dirty and ragged now, and purple hollows lay under their eyes, testament to lost sleep, lost loved ones, just loss. But I am also struck by the sudden heroism of people all across the continent, for I have come from the other side of it, the western front, where I participated in the great battle below the gods' teeth. A tide of exclamation greeted that announcement, and I marveled that it came from far out on the peninsula, and from the streets of the city as well. He was not shouting, his volume was what one might use for a toast at a fair-sized dinner party, yet no one had difficulty hearing him. Yes, I witnessed that, and much more. I can tell you exactly what happened in the granite tunnel. Here the people sent up another cheer. And I can reveal that a peace-loving citizen of Kauria, acting at the behest of Miss Rokira, long may she reign has had a secret role to play in this war, and indeed may have finally found a way to bring it to an end. It is why I am here now. That earned him the loudest roar yet, and he nodded at Survivor Field, assuring them that what he said was true. Friends, I have permission from the Pelinot to tell you that there is a fleet on its way here from Kauria this instant and it is coming to pick up the two allied armies that are marching this way across the mountains, one from Reel and one from Thorn. And together they will sail across the ocean with your own forces to answer the enemy in kind for what they have done to us.